a quick recap. We first understood what is a consignment. So what is a consignment? A consignment is the sending of the goods by one person called the consigner to another person called the consignee so that the consignee can sell the goods on behalf of the consigner. For this, the consignee gets a commission. We then found, we then understood the difference between a sale and a consignment. In sale, the basic difference is that in sale, the ownership of the goods is transferred to the buyer. But in consignment, only goods are physically sent, but ownership is not transferred. If goods are sent to the consignee and thereafter the consignee is not able to sell the goods, the consignee can return it to the consigner. If goods are lost in the go-down of the consignee, the loss is borne by the consigner because the goods continue to be those of the consigner. That is not the case in case of a sale. When goods are sold to the buyer, the buyer cannot return the goods only because he is not able to sell these goods to his customers. If the buyer incurs any expenses after receiving the goods in order to maintain the goods, in order to safeguard the goods, these expenses have to be borne by the buyer himself. We also then understood a pro forma invoice and an account sales. A pro forma invoice is a statement sent by the consigner to the consignee containing the details of the goods which are being sent and the cost of these goods. Account sales on the other hand is sent by the consignee to the consigner. Account sales is a statement sent by the consignee to the consigner detailing the quantity and the rate of the sales, quantity of goods sold, the price at which it has been sold, the balance of inventory, the commission which is due to the consignee, any expenses which have been incurred by the consignee on the consignment and which need to be reimbursed by the consignor. Therefore, the statement will contain the balance which is due by the consignee to the consignor. There is also the concept of an advance which is paid by the consignee. Like I said before, if 1 lakh worth of goods are being sent by the consigner to the consignee, on receipt of these goods, the consignee may send a check or a bill for a certain amount of these goods, maybe 75% or 80% of the goods. So a check for 80,000 or a bill of exchange for 80,000 would be sent by the consignee to the consigner. This is an advance and sometimes instead of advance, an amount is maintained by the consigner as a security deposit. Maybe 60% of the value of the goods is maintained, kept as security deposit with the consigner. We will understand a security deposit and advance a little later in our discussion. We then discussed ordinary commission and del credit commission. Ordinary commission is the commission on total sales which is paid by the consigner to the consignee because the consignee sells goods for the consigner. What is del credit commission? Since the consignee sells goods, the consignee is aware of the people to whom he is selling the goods. If he effects credit sales and he does so irresponsibly, he gives it to his friends. He, gives, he sells goods to his friends and he tells them that it is okay even if you do not pay the money because bad debt losses are not mine, it will be borne by the consigner. In such a case, all such bad debt losses would have to be borne by the consigner and the consignee would get his full commission on sales. In order to avoid a situation like this, a Dell Credit Commission 
may be given by the consignor to the consignee. A del credit commission, when a del credit commission is paid in addition to the ordinary commission, it means that the consignee will be responsible for any bad debt losses which arise on account of credit sales of goods of the consignment. However, both the ordinary commission and del credit commission are computed on total sales. Unless otherwise mentioned, del credit commission is also computed on total sales and not on credit sales. We also discussed an overriding commission, which is a commission paid in order to increase sales. Usually, it is computed as a percentage of the excess price, excess selling price that has been received by the consignee that the consignee has been able to collect over and above what the consignor expected or suggested the sale be made.